Yo, what is up? You have found We Like the Blazers. And finally, after I don't know how long it's been, I am joined with one Mr. or by one Mr. Brandon Goldner. Brandon, how you doing? Long time no see, buddy. I'm just running to catch up to the mic, man. It's so good to see you. Yeah, it's been a bit. Uh, how are you? Let's start there. <laughs> oh, I am dead tired, exhausted. This job site is just absolutely kicking my butt. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie. Like... I'm going to lean on. I just treat me as like you will tell me the news and give and I will give you my reaction because I have been so right. busy and so half checked out of things that have happened. I didn't even realize that media day had already occurred. <laughs> the All only right. reason that it, the only reason that I had realized it is because I happened to be scrolling through my phone and I was like, oh, Fan Fest is this weekend. I should grab my tickets for that. So I will be there for that. But that was then when I when I clicked on the link and there was an ad in there for a media day recap. And I was like, wait, what? Who? When? Huh? Yes, Ryan. Media Day has, in fact, happened. Um, I love it. And that's what we do for each other, right? We're like, we're paisanos. We're brothers here, man. If I have a day where I'm feeling a little down, you'll lift me up and I'll lift you right back. Yeah. I, I mean, wanna there's start... oh, real quick. Hold on. I want I want to I want to blow through some some tiny nuggets real quick. OK, so since we've recorded last, okay. Woj has retired. Hmm. Yeah, how do you Zach feel about Lowe, that? I feel like I Zach Lowe him. has been fired. I would have thought when Woj retired oh. that Zach Lowe would be the next step right in. And uh, then the, the Zach, Zach Lowe, Lowe firing. thing sucks, man. That, that sucks. That, I, yeah. Woj, I get it because that is a that is a lifestyle. Like you have to, I mean, again, there was that Woj, story of like him. He is only 24 years old and he looks like that. That's yeah, what the stress I know. does to you. It's, it's amazing, you know, and, <laughs> and so like. The crappy part is, is that I'm kind of anti Shams just because of his ties in with gambling and whatnot. And so it's it kind of gives me a little bit of an icky taste, but you know, we'll see, you know, I guess ESPN is floating out the idea Shams of, over here, uh, uh, you know, ESPN is <laughs> floating the idea of, you know, just giving Adam Schefter, you know, their NBA and or NFL insider, just like a tiny pay bump and having him be like the ultimate insider. I don't know. It's, it's rough. It's going to be, it's going to be weird seeing breaking news and not having it be called a Woj mom. We're just going to have to go with sham uh, wows and whatever, <laughs> whatever I mean, there's gotta she- be, shifty is, but I mean, I feel like ESPN has to replace him or at least pretend to at some point, but maybe they don't. And Zach Lowe, man, that just, it just sucks. Like I hate how, I mean, ESPN has been eroding for a long time, I'm not trying to get up on my soapbox. You said these were just nuggets. So I want to respect the time. I just think that it sucks. Zach Lowe is a good person. He has done a lot to platform and lift up other people who don't have as powerful and far reaching of a voice as he does. And he's really good at what he does. He's a great analyst. I, he's got a great voice. I've fallen asleep listening to him many a night, Ryan. I was, I was kind of shocked. I, I don't know if I should have been or not. I was shocked when it was the, when they had said what, you know, the num the number of, numbers in his salary. I was like, wow, he was making yeah. that much. Worth so. It. And so now what now they're paying people like, you know, Kendrick Perkins and, and people say Stephen A. Smith, Stephen A. Smith, at least like was a reporter and like knows that he's putting on an act. There are people who used to play in the NBA who are now, <laughs> I guess I already said his name, but like it's, I, I just, I, I don't like it, Ryan. I don't like it. Okay. Anyway, that sucks. You have any other nuggets? What are the nuggets? I have one nugget. Uh, what else did we miss? What, what, what's, what's the little nugget you got? It's a selfish nugget. Oh, okay. Go ahead. It's, it's a selfish Take nugget. Take your nugget. Uh, really quick as you, of course, no, we like the Blazers as part of the Blazers Edge family and podcast. Thank you to Rogue Media, uh, which includes Trail Daddy with Dave Deckard. And uh, oh, dear. Uh oh. Um, what's Corey Dickman's called? Rip City Roundtable. Thank you. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been a contributor to Blazers Edge the last year. And, you know, I have a long history there before, uh, have written there before, been an editor before. Ryan, I am again an editor at Blazers Edge. I don't know why I agreed to this. Uh, but it's pretty cool. So I will be on deck at least a couple days a week, um, making sure that the sausage gets made on blazersedge.com. It's an exciting year to do it, not just because it's, I think, the least depressing year in Blazers' recent history. In my view, we're removed from the Dame Might Leave era. 
we're now into Scoot's second year, Shaden Sharp's third year. We have a comp, a couple of competent centers and one of them is a rookie. So that's pretty cool. But I'll just say really quickly, like blazer's edge has been my blazer's home for a very long time for over a decade. I've gone waxing poetic about how I was banned there for commenting sideways and being a weirdo. So to be back there as an editor again is honestly like, it's a huge honor and I'm super happy about it. So, um, I also wanted to say blazer's edge related, Ryan, did you know what, what I'm going to put it this way? You should know the answer to this, but what about blazer's edge has changed for the first time in a decade, Ryan? Am I supposed you to actually know. know this? Cause no, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank now. <laughs> That's fine. Did I, uh, did I miss a memo or did I forget a memo? I guarantee you, I know I this think you forgot, forgot a memo, but it's okay. Cause you've been, you've been living life and working. And so have I, uh, blazer's edge is a credentialed media member again, Ryan, for the first time since Ben Golliver oh, left yes. low those I many years ago, that. what really happened. And I'm not going to go too far into this because I don't think I'm like, you know, it's not my information to share. Let's just say that, that the previous blazers administration <laughs> may have had something to do with it, but Connor what? Bergen, who is like a, an amazing human being, like a kind soul and a very, very good reporter, very strong writer is a credentialed member of the media now, which is amazing. If you go to blazersedge.com, you will find that he actually guested with Mike Richmond on the lockdown podcast. And the other thing is that when I uh, chatted a little bit with Connor today, uh, he is like, he is wanting to get on this show, Ryan. So we need to invite him on, but congratulations to Connor. Uh, he's now the associate editor of blazers edge and a credential media member. He's earned it. And it's really cool for me to see Blazer's Edge now stepping back into a role that it once had, which is combining, you know, the the uh, the fan content and the analysis that our writers give and the aggregation of other people's news. And now combining that again with a presence at Moda Center, I think, is going to make it uh, way better, <laughs> frankly. And I'm really nice. excited for it. I'm here for it. Nice. Yeah, no, because that's always, you know, it, we, you and I, same age, we all have fond memories of, I mean, like, I would literally stay up for the the Ben Golliver, you know. Media Row reports. Re, yep, yep, and and all those. And, and so those, those kind of things were fun days where it's, you know, half an hour after a game, Dave's got his recap up from, yep. you know, his fan perspective kind of thing. And then you can kind of mesh that immediately afterwards with, you know, Golliver's take. So it'll be, it'll be nice that, you know, especially now with all those, you know, new talent, new writers and, and everything coming in to kind of be able to piece some of that together and go the, uh, the OG blazers edge style. New talent, new writers, eh, Ryan? Perhaps a nugget for another day. But anyway, no, it's cool. And like, and I do, I appreciate what you just said, which is like, it's cool to have the instant recap and you get a lot of discussion. And, um, but then a little bit later, if you stay up long enough and on the East Coast, it's going to be tough. I'm telling you right now, it's not happening many times. If you can me. stay, if you can stay up through games, I'm no. going to be amazed. I, I, I explicitly said when the offer came, Hey, would you maybe want to put your big boy pants back on and come back as an editor? I said, Hey, I'm East coast time and I'm waking up early now. And they were like, that's completely fine. So it, God, thank you to Dave Decker. So, man. I love so you. So you will cover the East coast swings is what we're East saying. Coast swings like stuff that like, for example, this morning, we had, you know, a little bit of aggregation, which always goes on, but someone dropped something overnight. Um, Carrie Eggers had a little column about Chauncey Billups being on the hot seat and Portland not being ready to win. Not a particularly hot take, but, you know, I was able to write that up and it was ready to go early Pacific time. And I had had my coffee, gone to the gym and had, you know, was getting ready to go to work. So it was great. Um, all to say, Ryan, it has been a while since we've recorded much has happened. However, we do want to respect everyone's time, which is a phrase I find myself saying more and more now that I'm <laughs> back in the swing of a nine to five of people who work in an office respecting your time. Oh, right. I'm going to give you your time back. I'm gonna give you your time. Here's three minutes. Our meetings, <laughs> meetings ended three minutes early to give your time back. Um, let's talk a little bit about the media day that you missed. Uh, All right. One of the things that I found interesting from media day uh was that there was no bullshit from the Blazers front office. There was no Neil Olshay is coming to tell you how great this team's going to be. Uh, uh-uh. there was a lot of like, Hey, we're not ready to win. We're not there yet. It's development year. 
trying to find how the pieces fit together. Um, do you appreciate Ryan that we have a front office that is actually willing to tell us the truth? Does that matter to you as a fan? <laughs> yes, but it doesn't mean I'm going to buy any of it, the truth they're selling on media day. Media days are always fun because it is your first day of school. You're wearing your best outfit. You're putting your best foot forward and nine times out of 10, you can turn around at the end of the season and go back to a media day thing and be like, wow, they polished the hell out of that turd to sell us on it. So in this regard, I am happy that this comes, a lot of it came off as tempering expectations. There was not a lot of trying to build so many of these young pieces up or like try to say that, you know, this, this roster, you know, we feel it can overachieve. There was a lot of, you know, them just saying they're looking for clarity on things. And so it's great that they're also looking for the same crap that we are as fans to get clarity on what we're going to do with 9,000 guards and, you know, how we're going to play, you know, two centers and, and stuff like that. So I, I like it. I appreciate it. That and, and any press conference that is not held by Neil O'Shea uh, from now until the end of time will forever be a win. So, <laughs> totally fair. Yeah, and I, I mean, yeah, to your point, like looking in retrospect about the comments made today. Yeah, some of them are not going to age particularly well, but that's part of the job, right? I mean, I appreciated yeah. it. Like, it's it's not. I think it's hard to do PR for any organization, and it's especially hard. Sports is very, 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 very visible. And so there is some amount of like, hey, everything's great, guys. Buy your tickets and season ticket holders. Um, But yeah, I mean, I don't know. So I I appreciate the honesty. Uh, There was some interesting comments from Scoot Henderson about food. Um, You know, there was I'm yeah, I'm going to leave that part aside. Uh, (laughs) But I did think it was interesting. One particular answer that he had. And I think it was actually a question that Kerry Eggers himself asked which was if it was important to Scoot Henderson that he be a starter. And the aggregation that I have seen about his response was, I'm just going to control what I can control. And if you didn't watch the video, Ryan, which I don't think you have, you would get away with thinking that Scoot Henderson gave this diplomatic answer. And that was that. However, when you watch the video, there's a different story to be told right after the question is asked scoot at the end of the question is, do you think that you're going to be a starter this year and how important is that to you? And he starts by going, Mm -hmm. you know, the way it is, is it's uh, all I can only just control what I can control. Like he was about to answer the question and then he caught himself. So (laughs) this says two things, your training paying off. That's one of them. Exactly. Right. Like that's the way you're supposed to do it. You catch yourself. The other thing is that Scoot Anderson isn't quite ready for prime time, which is a bummer. We didn't see him play in summer league. I thought that was a strange choice. I mean, he did have his strongest part of the season in his last 20 ish games where he was shooting just below league average from three on six attempts. I'm pulling that from my brain. So if that's wrong, you can fact check me. Sorry <laughs> about that. But he was playing better to end the year and then he doesn't play summer league. And then he comes in and he's like, I don't know if I'm going to, he didn't say, I didn't say this, but like, we don't know if he's going to be a starter or not. Brian, does it concern you that Scoot Henderson, the player that we used our number three pick on, who was going to be a franchise point guard, may not be a starter in year two? Does that give you any of the heebie jeebies? Yeah, it concerns me. It concerned <laughs> yeah. me. It concerned right. me last year when he went through phases where he wasn't going to be a starter. Um, and it, I would say my concern isn't so much of in. The terms of that, you know, his skill level is not there yet. My concern would come in. There is one goal for the season and one goal only, and that is capture the flag. What better way to get Scoot Henderson reps as a starter to get him to where he possibly needs to be? Is by helping us lose. lose. Let's go. <laughs> or just, no, I'm not going to say it that way, but yes, that that's is. What you but are, then, come on, but, that's where you're going with that. What better way <laughs> than to just say, okay, go out there. Let's learn. Let's see. You know, the, you can pick up better game tape and better things, um, better film and, and, and tendencies and whatnot when he's out there going against the starting unit than if he's going against backups per se. I know rotations are fluid, blah, blah, blah. But just set him out there and worst case scenario 
he picks it up real quick. He maintains the pace that he ended the season with, and he does better than expected. Is I'm sure that he knows what the effing goal of the season is. If he's too good, then just rotate somebody else through. Yeah. Deal with the fallout. Deal with the fallout then of like, oh well, why is now Scoot on the bench? Just be like, I don't know. Back strain. Out two weeks. Uh, comes back. Oh, we're yeah. working him back in. I, look, I have a. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave the Scoot being a starter thing aside. It, no, I'm not. I, really quick. I, I think he. <laughs> should, I. I think he should be starting. He's not their best point guard, but he should be starting. Like. Yeah. It's a little worrisome that he's not going to be starting. Like the only the yeah. only reason I could I could see is if they're shopping Simons and they want him to get more of those. Moves. Actually, thank you for that's a good that's actually a good point. And it's the same thing for Robert Williams, who we'll talk about in a second. But the impetus for the Blazers to play people in order to trade them, that drive or that desire will be fully at odds with developing people on the team. And so yeah, we have to be in, in regard, that. Yeah. In regard, I mean, sharp, he should be playing a starting two. So I could see it where they're like, we need sharp to get that, get those minutes, get that spot. And we want scoot to play. But if then if we roll out this three guard lineup or with the rest of the, the people that are on the team, you know, and it doesn't necessarily work, you can't try to leverage the most you can get for ant. If he happens to be coming off a bench, but, and as yeah. you know, it, I, that's, so that, that's where you. I can I, see no, where it I, makes sense. This is, this is why, this is why you're on the show. Like, yeah, that's a really good <laughs> point. And that's, that's true. No. And you're right. I hadn't thought about that. So, um, all right. But what I was going to say about Cooper flag, uh, was it doesn't matter if the blazers win one game next year. I need people to really remember the way the lottery odds go the Blazers will almost certainly not be picking number one next year, no matter what they do, whether they're third worst, fourth worst, fifth worst, sixth worst, seventh worst, it's probably Ryan not going to be them. And I don't want people to get too hung up in squeezing out every win. If this were something that there were like a top four, and actually some of this may get clearer as college starts and we get to see what's happening. If there's a really solid top four, top five, I'm more on board with, okay, let's maximize the number of losses. So we get in that window, right? But when you're talking about the number one pick, there's not, they're not getting it, Ryan. I'm calling my shot now. It's not going to happen. That's fine. I, 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 you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I just, yeah. And you used the word that I was going to use of in that window. You need to look at the groupings like the best they can do. Like, it's not going to be like, you know, as long as they can maintain in that, what is it? Is it the top three or top four that all have the same percentage? Which one is, I can't remember right now. Top four. As long as you can stay in that top four range and you're sharing the best possible chance that you have of landing that pick, that's all you can do. But you know, if it, where I'll I'll start griping about wins and losses is like when you're literally on the bubble between are you going to be in that top four or are you going to be the fifth spot? Now, granted, that is none of that is going to guarantee that the Blazers get the first pick. I do so enjoy you tempering your expectations on this before before the season has even started. I love it. Uh, I get I, I'll give you until about December to where depending on how things start going, you're right back on that hype train. Just I'm going to yeah, call that. Right now. I know. A quick, okay. a quick fact check to me is um, actually it's top three, but it's even slightly more complicated than that because there's every a spot, lingering half percentage point or something like that. Well, it's not even just that, but every spot you move down makes it more likely that you could potentially fall an extra spot. So, for example, if you're if you're the worst team, you can only fall as far as five. If you're the second worst team, you could fall as far as six. And so like, even though those top three teams had the same lottery odds for one, mm-hmm. two, three, four, the difference is that if you're the third worst team, you can fall away to seven. So there is a little bit of a penalty there. Right. But I'm just saying like the meat of the window is like around three, four, five. I'm okay with that. But like, again, like maximizing every single loss, I don't think should be the goal. I think the goal this year should be 
maximize development and get as many losses as you can in the maximization of that development. And I think those two Mm -hmm. things are not particularly at odds. You don't have Caden sharp, even if he takes a step forward is going to be able to, is he going to be able to drag this team to like five extra wins? Probably not. Is Donovan clinging? Probably not. Is scoot Henderson? Probably not. Is Denny Advia? Probably not. And you know, Tawani Kamara put on 20 pounds of muscle, Ryan, probably not. So Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I agree with myself. It's my other, it's my other favorite window. media day thing. You know, well, I, it's my funny other... Yeah, go ahead. Deb. I was in my favorite media it, across all sports landscapes. Either somebody has lost a lot of weight or somebody has gained a lot of weight. I love it every yeah. year, well, no matter what so in, in a world, you... in a, in a world and a culture in which we're trying to get away from body shaming anybody. It world. is the only, it is the, it is the number the one world. thing that is said across all sports landscapes. As body shaming athletes in a world in which Denny Advia checked in last year, 210 pounds this year, Denny Advia, 240 pounds coming this summer. So like, yeah, I like some Denny Advia has gained a bunch of weight to Monty Kamara. There are some rumors that he put on 20 pounds of muscle and he squashed those and said, I put on some muscles, plural, but not 20 pounds <laughs> worth. Okay. Uh, a little bit more media day and let's move on to the media deal. Um, Last thing about media day is that Deandre Ayton, first of all, three musketeers mustache. Yes, please. Second of all, his energy was phenomenal. He had really good vibes. That's what you want to see. Another player who had the best stretch of their season was at the end of it. Uh, So Deandre Ayton, now the elder statesman, I think in his seventh year and has had nothing but good things to say about Donovan Cligan, uh, who is a center. Donovan Cligan's had nothing but good things to say about Deandre Ayton. Ryan, what do you think? Uh, buddy cop movie starring DeAndre Ayton and Donovan Klingon. Up or down on that? Does the movie end with Donovan Klingon driving his, his buddy cop to the airport because he got transferred to a different station? No. Oh, because that's the um, only way I'm on board with it. That's the only way I'm on board with it. Where they make DeAndre Ayton shave his three, three musketeers mustache. I, I think it's a good thing, Ryan. Like DeAndre Ayton, I'm not expecting him to be the thing that people thought he could be when he was first drafted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as a veteran, he's a veteran and he's hitting like well above league at league average mid range. And he is like active on defense and he's getting rebounds and he's setting good screens and he like, great. It's fucking awesome. Like, yeah. And and Klingon's weaknesses are eight and strengths. So I'm, I'm not at all opposed to, you know, the, the put their lockers next to each other. Perfectly fine by me. They can go. Like, they can go and grab dinner on the freaking road. Te- teach a, him what he like, needs to know. Here, here's the funny thing, and we've talked about DeAndre Ayton's contract. I think is nigh untradeable. If, if there's a world in which DeAndre Ayton is the starter and Klingon is the backup, and over time those roles just sort of softly switch, because DeAndre Ayton at his size and again like with a consistent effort level. Uh, as like a 31 year old backup big. Yeah. Like, that's great. I'm not calling him Tyson Chandler, but I'm just Mm -hmm. saying like that frame of body and that level of not defensive prowess, but like relatively mobile, obviously much more skilled offensively, much less skilled defensively. I could see it, Ryan. I could see the Blazers making their championship run with DeAndre Aiden coming off the bench. I could see DeAndre Aiden going down Broadway, holding up that Larry OB. Bring it, baby. As lo- so <laughs> as long as long as that's totally going to be dependent upon what he asks for his next contract. As long as he is well, also the mindset that he much. is not going to get that he is not going to get paid again. That this was his this was his big one. But he got but, paid already, right? I don't think he's going to ask for that. I, think I he's mean, fine. does like, does anybody you know get some money and be like, you know what? I could use less. No, but also like he's not hurting. And I also think that he understands his station in the NBA and he should feel confident and feel good about where he is right now. Okay. Do we, Uh, do we know if he bought a snowmobile yet? We don't just in case. I don't know if we bought any de-icer. I don't know if he has maybe went, did the Sim city thing where you can change the elevation and just lowered his house a little bit. Uh, (laughs) We have like 10 minutes left before zoom kicks us off. Uh, Ryan, let's talk really quickly. The new media deal. Uh, the Blazers have dumped Toot Sports. You know more about this stuff than I do, slash you are more savvy about it. I would like to hear your opinion, and I'd like 
I would like it right now. What do you know? Uh, well, Wait, what do, you, first do, th- do you know the details of the New Deal? Is something that's a yes, big uh, Okay, I know details ish, but uh, first one, uh, pour one out for uh, Fox Twelve because I think absolutely everybody and and their you know brother thought that it was going to be on Fox. The sense locally forever has been that there would be an over the air streaming deal. Um, I do. I selfishly very much do love the fact that um, uh, they are going to carry every single game that is not nationally broadcast in a season in which the Blazers only have one <laughs> nationally broadcast game, which that is against Amy for me as somebody. Bucks. Yeah, very appropriate. Um, but but there there seems to be there's a little blowback in the beginning because it's weird. So I don't. I don't know if you've ever operated via over the air cable antenna as of late. Uh, I do. So like the over the air here locally, I can get about 60 channels, but a lot of them are some weird channels because, you know, channel two, K A T U. And then there's like 2.2, 2.6, 2.4, you know, you go up to channel six, it's 6.3, 6.8, 6.9, 6. 3. 1, 6. 4, 1, 5, 9, 6. That's and pie, so, by the way, you're welcome. Yeah. I, Keep going on that. No. <laughs> um, so my, my, my understanding is in the beginning is is that it's actually going to be channel like 2.2, which is where you see games, which is not in HD. But eventually they will move that over. They upgrade their stuff, yada, yada, yada. I, um, I can't imagine that they're going to keep it on a um, not the just – flat out point two, but if they are and not move it over to just the regular standard channel two. But uh, my understanding is that if they, if they don't, and it stays on that specialty channel that they are in the process of converting that to an HD broadcast. Um, also, if you have YouTube TV, these same, st- these same offbeat stations are completely accessible. So you don't, you don't run the risk of that. Um, it is a little harder to, or it is, if you actually do have like direct TV and, and whatnot, an actual satellite box, they don't always have the specialty channels, but that is where then their streaming, op- the Blazer streaming option comes in, which is a lot better. Uh, God bless the return of Blazer Vision. Uh, it sounds a lot better. Um, the, the pricing. See, I mean, 100, 120 bucks, I believe, for a season. That this is, is that is not bad. This is I what think, we've been asking I think the for, original bla- the original Blazer Blazer Vision. Do you know how much it costs to get a season? No, no. one hundred and twenty dollars. Wow, this is like the Costco hot dog of streaming options. The price doesn't they change. Are n- Nope, they are not changing it. So yeah, and then there's <laughs> you know like single proof. game, <laughs> single single game totally options. Totally a modern miracle. We need to make Joe Cronin or Dwayne Hankins president of the United States. He'll get this inflation thing under control. Yeah, and so I believe there's single game purchase options as well, which is nice because like I'm not going to buy the streaming thing. I have antennas on my TVs. I can just tune into it that way. But you know, it, it it's nice to know that I could just be like, hey, five bucks to watch this game if I'm like out of town or on a vacation or something, want to watch a game. I can just five bucks here here rent that whatever. Um, it is uh, it is nice to see that they have. I want to say entered the 21st century, but when we're going to uh, like a, a a local area broadcast channel, that's that's nice. One detail that I wasn't sure on is that I believe the Blazers stated that they were in the process of copying what uh, Phoenix did in, um, you know, trying to provide people with antennas. That has uh, been I, confirmed. I, I, I never saw a sign up list or details on how you get on a list. I think that I think it was Dwayne Hankins, who's the Blazers president, said it. And so I would bank on it. Um, <clears throat> you don't say something like that pump publicly and then not do it. But yeah, I mean, the only gripe I have with all this, and I think you summed it up perfectly, is that the streaming option is not like a DVR type deal where you can like pause and rewind. That's that's a little rough to be I, I, blunt. But like to come from a to come from a team though, it's that's to be expected. They want they, if you're yeah, gonna pay, they want to make you can an appointment it viewing. an hour later. It's not the it's not the worst thing. It's just a little makes it harder for people like me, although actually, so I'm out of market now in Connecticut, so I can just I can um uh, I can just get NBA league pass TV. league pass. Thank you. I don't want to say NBA TV. I can get league pass and I'm fine for now for this season. So we'll see, maybe that'll improve later. I'm really happy with this. I think it's great. I think that the, you know, dumping toot sports was obviously the right idea. Regional sports network are going the way of the dinosaur anyway. So here we go into the 21st century. Good job blazers. And I also Ryan, I have to do this. I got to do it to him. I did it on okay. Twitter. I'm doing it here. I got to give someone his flowers. Uh-oh. Someone in particular, 
someone in particular, someone who was right. Danny Meringue, here are your flowers. He had been saying for a while that when the Blazers were able to do something that they were, they were going to do their damnedest to do right. And this is not perfect, but I think that they did right by fans. So good job, Danny Meringue. Uh, other people. This is why I, Kate- I could I could never do what Danny does. I could not sit on knowing all that he obviously knew for months without saying a damn thing. I I, I, also, I, like, I don't I don't have that kind of patience. I also I mean, you know, yes, I, I, I you definitely don't. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, and, neither <laughs> do I. and that's that's why we're not professional reporters. And he is. So anyway, congratulations to him on that. Uh, Ryan, we do have, in fact, three and a half minutes left. The only other thing I wanted to hit really quick. Sad news. Robert Williams who had been ramping up. He was doing five on five, not yet cleared for full contact. He like experienced soreness in his leg the other day. Well, okay. Now he has a hamstring strain. He's out for two weeks. Does it surprise you? The answer is no. Why doesn't it surprise you? <laughs> He's in a, per- this is my shocked face. He's in a perpetual state of injured. That just sucks though. Can, can we get him healthy enough to trade him? That's all. I just, just, uh, God, and, uh, and at this point in time, I feel like well, you, you got to give something up to trade him. We'll see. Look, optimism reigning on me right now. Two weeks, nah, hamstring, hamstrings, not the knee. It's connected sort of, but not really. So like maybe, maybe, you know, it's just something it's really, it's structurally not the same thing. So maybe it's okay. Who knows? We'll see. It, 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 listen, Ryan, if Zadrunas Ilgalskis. <laughs> could this is true. This is true. Come back. Yeah, how many times he broke his foot? 70,000 times the dude is eight feet tall and he broke his foot a million times. And it's like, well, this dude's going to be out of the league. And then he played like 10 more years. He was great. Like, anyway, all right, we've come to the end. Do you have anything else before we bounce? I will be at, in the off chance that this uh, episode makes it up before then. I will be at fan fest tomorrow. Anybody wants okay. to come up and yell at me, tell us that we don't record enough, uh, you know, berate me for any of my stupid opinions or tell me how awesome I am. Uh, come find me. I'll be it's there. It's very bold of you to think I'm going to get this out quickly enough for tomorrow to mean anything to anybody. I said in the off chance, off chance. Okay. Fair enough. I, I will try my best. Cause we are going to, Ryan, we didn't say it. We're going on a trip to Maine, going to Maine, never been to Maine, going to Portland, Maine. And then I'm also going to Acadia and I'll see the leaves change and it's going to be wonderful. And if you want to catch us, you can always do that. at we like the blazers.com can also catch us at like the blazers on Twitter. Uh, we like the blazers at gmail.com. Haven't said that one in a while, but mm-hmm. you can find him at the witty Ryan on Twitter, me at golden PDX. We are so proud to be part of the rogue media network and the blazers edge family of podcasts, including trail daddy with Dave Deckard and the rip city ground table of Corey Dickman. That is it a lot of talking i did it it's been a while i did it anyway appreciate you all thanks for being here and until next time go lasers rip city rip city we didn't even talk about the walton jersey thing but we're out of time okay next time all right bye